What is up, Madden 25 Gamers? I hope you guys enjoyed that full game we just broke down uh, for our offense and defensive guide from last week. We were talking about the New York Giants playbook. This week, we're going to be shifting our focus to another playbook that's fairly similar to the New York Giants book, but I think that it provides a lot of value that the Giants book doesn't have, and it starts with the base formation. It depends on what you like. If you like trip sets, then you'll like the Tampa Bay book a little bit more, but if you like that 2 by 2 set, I think the Giants book is one of the best in the game to get a 2 by 2 set look. Anyways, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump into this week's Scheme of the Week. This week, we are going to be breaking down the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on offense and defense, um, or excuse me, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playbook on offense, the New York Jets playbook on defense, and the team we're going to be using to illustrate this defense and offense is going to be the Chicago Bears. So let's hop into this real quick. I want to get uh, started breaking down this base play because I think it's really powerful. Uh, it's a play that we've talked about a lot. Um, I haven't talked about it as much as some others, but S. Gibbs over at MaddenTips.com. If you're not following MaddenTips.com, check them out. They're one of the they are the premier website for Madden 25 and Madden 15 and all the future because they are a very uh, dynamic duo with Gibbs and Farrells over there. They do a great job. One of the plays that they have talked about all season long is the shotgun bunch Z spot. That is where this scheme starts. Now we're going to make a couple of roster adjustments and we'll, we'll break that all down uh, for you guys when we talk about the uh, when we talk about the what are we going to talk uh, the depth chart when we talk about the depth chart later on in the week we'll talk about all these depth chart adjustments we're going to be making but basically guys the play that I come out in every single time is the shotgun bunch Z spot now a couple things you want to quickly note here uh, with this shotgun bunch Z spot is you see how they're pressed up when they're pressed up I run a different setup than when they're not pressed up because when they're pressed up it can mean a, a press alignment on the outside some of these routes work better when you make them unbump up by using motion snaps, etc. So when they're not pressed up, or, or excuse me, when they are pressed up, what I like to do here is I like to take Alshon Jeffrey, and I like to place him on a... I leave him on his corner route, actually, when they're not pressed. I take Mar uh, Martellus Bennett here. He's always going to be on this route every single time. He's going to be on an in route or a slant route. I like the in route personally, but that's just me. And I like the smart route, his in route. Uh, and the reason for that is gonna, I'm going to create a levels concept with this route. And then I'm going to take Earl Bennett, and I'm going to place him on a drag route. And you see, instead of that spot route, now he's changed to a drag route. And then Matt Forte, I'm going to place him on a wheel pattern. And what I like to do is I like to motion snap this far left receiver three steps to the outside. Remember, we like to flip the formation. I forgot to mention that in the beginning of the video. I apologize for that. We like to flip the formation. We're going to motion him three steps to the outside. We've broken this down before, but that route with a pass lead up is going to do a very nice job at beating man-to-man -man coverage. And that's not the first read on this play because it takes a little bit of time to get open. The first look on this play is always this corner route to Alshon Jeffrey. If he does not get pressed at the line of scrimmage, and it's man coverage, this will be a very effective route. So here we see he's not going to get pressed, pass lead down to the outside, and Alshon Jeffrey is going to be off to the races, trying to break some tackles, etc. So that's the first read. The second read on this play is, is then we're going to look to the levels read with Bennett and the R1 Martellus Bennett, the two Bennett, uh, the Bennett brothers, as if you will. But basically you see that route against man-to-man, -man. And then now what I want to do is I want to show you uh, the next route I read here is Martellus Bennett. And you see he's going to get open against man as well, passing down to the inside. And why is he going to get open against man, guys? If you haven't been, we, we've been talking about it all year. Man coverage is very vulnerable when they cannot press. Because Martel Bennett's a tight end, he, he is not going to get pressed. Because of the bunch, Alshon Jeffrey has to be manually pressed. Which what I mean by that is watch watch the guy that's down on Alshon Jeffrey right here. Watch what happens. He's going to scoot up. When he scoots up like that, that is an instant tell you need to change your read. So we're going to take him off that corner route, and we're going to put him on a smart route out route. And I wanted to show you that because watch what happens. Let's just leave him on the corner route real quick and show you what happens when they do that. Watch watch the route. It's going to get covered a little bit better. You see, it takes him a while to get off the jam. He still beats man, but it just, it, it's not as good of a look as it was in the very beginning. Okay? So stay with me here because this is going to be a little bit of a longer video because I want to... This is huge for Madden 15. It's huge for Madden 25. You have to get this stuff. So when you see that change in the cornerback and he comes up like that, 
That means that the defense has manually pressed Alshon Jeffrey's guy. All of the other routes are unbumpable, except his route. So what we're going to do is we're going to change him to an out route, or if you want to keep the pattern of unbumpable, we're going to put him on a hitch route, and we're going to smart route that route. You only do that if you're in a first and 10 or second and 8. When you're underneath 7 yards to go on your down, you don't ever smart route anything. Okay, that's just a quick tip. But I hope you're getting this because now watch what happens with Alshon Jeffries' route. Now it's unbumpable, even though they pressed, and I'm still beating man-to-man. -man. Okay, I hope you got that. Now, if you didn't get that, what you can do is, if you're in a situation where you're not in uh, able to smart route a hitch route, then you could just simply place him on a curl route, and it's going to go 10 yards. We have to keep the spacing the same is what I'm trying to get out of here, and we have to keep the flow of the play the same. So here you see, even though he gets pressed, he's still going to do a decent job at beating man, but he's not the best read, but again, he's still going to be there for us if we have to have it. But when he's on that corner route, what I don't like, and this is, again, this is going back to we have to keep the flow of the play consistent. When he's on that corner route and they press, it takes him way too long. You're focused on that. Then you're going to be so much later in getting the ball to Bennett. So that's why we like to keep everything. You see what I'm trying to get at here. Now, you could, if you want to, place him on a smart routed out route. Uh, I think S. Gibbs, that's actually how he runs this play. But let's watch what happens with the smart routed out route. It's the same basic thing, but it's not as quick hitting, in my opinion. That's why I leave him on the corner route if they don't press. Now, I was a long-winded uh, little talk there to get to a point that we're talking about with our base play. There are keys. When you see this happen right here, watch. When you see that press happen... Instant key. If you can't put Jeffrey on a hitch route, it's an instant key that you need to go to some kind of man beater. Because they're probably in man to man. Okay? So, I know I took a little bit to get to that point, but I hope that it gives you some value. Alright? So now moving on to the cover two, or the cover three. We'll look at the cover three zone here. So now you see that this is a look where they're not pressed up. So I have it. I'm probably just going to run it the way I've been running. Okay. So I'm just going to run it the same way. And now I'm going to bring Bennett over, motion over here. And you see that that corner route, because of the drag, the drag is going to hold down that flat zone. So you can work it as almost if it was a curl flat read. So then watch what happens, though. Watch if they make an adjustment. And this is an essential for you guys to understand because you have to understand how the game works uh, so that you can be successful. So now let's watch this. And this is, I shot right into a curl flat zone. Watch how, you see how he flies out like that? I still fit it in, but you see how he flies out like that? I hope you guys are understanding what I'm trying to say here. And if you're not, let me know in the comments so that I can explain a little bit more and try to get to help you. But basically, let's take a look at this again. So watch Bowman when he goes out. You saw last time how he shot out. Well, what can I do if he does that? Then I just go right underneath here to Bennett. And I'm, it's it's a quick hit. But again, it's it's a very powerful play. They're going to be focused on that stuff. Now, let's, t let's take a look now. Let's let the rest of the play run here uh, because I am getting a little bit uh, long-winded. But let's take a look. Let's watch the rest of the play here. So they start. I'm just going to assume that they use the drag. Watch what happens. Roast it over the middle to Marshall. Passing down to the inside. It's wide open. Every single coverage in the game, it is wide open. They have to guard it. So, when we mix in those quick throws, we're not even we haven't even talked about the right side of the field, but only on the left side. Look at all that they're going to have to do to stop that. Okay? So, that's what I'm trying to, to get you guys to understand here. So, now let's take a look at this play against a cover two sink. Because we've shown it against two men under. We've shown it against cover uh, three. Now I want to show you against like a cover two zone situation. And, and then we'll be done. Because I know I took a little bit of time to try to get at my point here. Okay, so this is a situation where you see they're pressed up. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put Ashon Jeffrey on that hitch route. I'm going to smart route Bennett. If I cannot smart route their routes, then I'm going to leave Jeffrey on the corner route. Put Bennett on that curl route and keep the drag. So that I keep the same spacing. Uh, hopefully you guys are... Those are subtle things that you pick up on and I hope you guys are picking up on that but basically we're going to bring him across remember our first read at this point is Jeffrey and you see Jeffrey's going to sit in a nice little spot against zone coverage like that now now real quickly guys I, I want some feedback here before I continue on here 
Let me know if you like this type of a breakdown where I'm really in-depth, I'll talk about keys, stuff like that, or you like breakdowns that I've done in the past where I simply just show you the play against cover two man under, cover two sink, cover two, cover three, and cover four. I want to know what you guys think is better for you because that's the only thing I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to help you. I'm trying to help you be successful with this play. So now, uh, the next read on cover two sink is that drag route. You see the drag route sits in a nice spot, but why does the drag route get open? Because of the vertical stretch, the vertical stretch that we're doing with uh, Alshon Jeffrey and uh, Martellus Bennett here. So watch this again. Let's take a look back here. Let's run it back. Watch Martellus Bennett. He's going to go on that deep end. He's going to stretch the defense. You see, he's not really that... And that was a, I got ball tipped, but that happens sometimes. But well, let's take a look now. So let's let's run the play, and then we'll just snap it quicker. But you see, Martellus Bennett is a little open, but you see that he's he's more of a vertical uh, of a stretch for the defense. And so now that's going to open up another window for our play. So now watch as we deliver the ball to Marshall. If they start using the drag underneath. We're going to hit Marshall over the top, passing down the inside. The only play in the game that stops Marshall's route is a cover two sink or a cover two yellow zone. But what happens, guys, is this. They're going to start doing this. So they're going to call their cover two sink. The cover two sink cannot stop the left side of the field. The only thing the cover two sink can stop is the right side. So then, say they maybe go like this. They double man up on Marshall. They're going to leave one yellow across here. They're going to take this guy, and they're going to drop a hook zone. And this is just an example of them getting really adjusty. But this is somewhat of what they would have to do uh, to be able to stop this. So let's take a look at this again. So now, this is just some something that they could do. It's not what they will. I'm just trying to give you an example here. But now you see how there's no yellow zone now over there, so I could easily deliver the ball to Errol Bennett or Martellus Bennett or Matt Forte on the crossing patterns. And that's the, the key of Bunch C-Spot. But you have to identify the key player. You have to identify whether or not they press coverage. And you have to use all of your hot routes to your advantage to beat the defense. I hope that this video is beneficial to you guys because this play is the foundation of everything we're going to be doing from the Tampa Bay playbook. And if it was beneficial, I just ask that you let me know in the comments something that you learned that you didn't know before you watched this video. I just ask that you do that so that I could get some feedback so that I could figure out what I'm doing good and what I'm doing bad so that I can make the best videos possible for you, the best breakdowns so that you can be winning more games in Madden 25 and ultimately in Madden 15. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you guys today. It's been a blast and we'll talk to you guys later on in some of our other content that we have coming today.